listen to me. Now, I've been hearing that you've been not wanting to share things. That you, now, don't turn away from me. It's not a time to be ashamed. Uh-huh. Listen to me. The cat has been telling me that you have... Uh-huh. You can't apologize now. You need to apologize to the cat. That you have been mean and being a bit of a bully to him. So, I think you need to go talk to... Uh, talk to Tiger and... Get things straightened out a little bit between the two of you guys. Okay. Alright. You can get down now. Alright. Oh, hey guys. I'm just trying to settle a situation between uh, some friends here. Sometimes they have a bit of a disagreement. Yeah, you know how that goes. Would you like to hear a story? I figured that's why you guys come by. My name is Mr. Scott. And I've been doing some stories for some of the guys that are out of school right now. So they have uh, something to listen to. And... Excuse me. My goodness. Apparently they're arguing again. But, my name is Mr. Scott. I'm the school resource officer at Hot Springs Elementary. It's a small elementary school in the mountains of Western North Carolina. And as of most places in the United States right now, and a lot of places in the world, uh, school is closed to make sure all our kids stay safe and healthy. So I thought I'd put, some together, put together some quick stories for you guys to listen to, because my students, they all know I love to tell stories. And sometimes from really tall tales. But I've got a, a really good story today I think you might like. Do you mind here? Let me do a technical thing real fast, okay? Stay. All right. Here we go. There. Is that a little bit better? Can you hear me, Bell? They're doing some construction uh, on the next ridge over from where I'm at right now. And you may be able to hear the construction vehicles. They're backing up and going forward and and, uh, and working hard. And I, this device here will hopefully keep some of the, uh, the beep beep and the construction noise down a little bit anyway. Now, when I started doing this, my cousin, Jenny, who is a retired teacher here in North Carolina, uh, sent me a message and said that one of her favorite stories that she read to her kids and her students was uh, called uh, Evil John and the Devil. And I did some looking around and I, I was able to find it. And it is written down by the same gentleman that wrote down a lot of our jack tales. So you may notice a little bit of the the uh, language being the same and some of the uh, the phrases and stuff that they talk about being uh, being quite the same. So now let's listen to Evil John and the Devil. Once upon a time, there was a blacksmith named John. You know what they call a blacksmith? Sometimes they call him a smith. Just smith. That's maybe where the name came from originally. So he was known as a stern fellow since he didn't like to be bothered while he was working. Okay. A lot of people are like that. He always shooed away the children who gathered at the door of his shop to watch the sparks fly and when he beat on his anvil. And woe to the person who dared touch the, his hammer. See, John respected his tools. And he respected everybody else's tools. The things that people made their livings with. And he re really expected everyone else to respect his tools. John wasn't really a mean man. He just wanted, to be, wanted folks to just leave him alone. Especially when he's working or when his tools come to uh, to the matter. He wanted people to leave his tools alone. Well, one day, an old man came down the road and stopped at the shop. 
It was a really hot day, one of those where the heat waves of the road make it hard to see from one side to the other, which is kind of interesting when you consider that a lot of times these were dirt roads back then and it has to be really hot to make those heat waves off a dirt road. And well, John took pity on the old man and asked him to come into the shop and sit down. And he even gave him a big frosty cold glass of lemonade. Since it wasn't a busy day in the shop, John even told the man a few stories, kind of like what we're doing now, and that he played a bit on his fiddle while the old man relaxed and sat in his rocking chair. The old man was extremely grateful, and when he had recovered from the heat and got up to go, he said, John, I've got to tell you, everyone says you're a mean old so-and-so, but you treated me as good as anyone possibly could. That's going to stand you in good stead because I'm not what I look like. I'm St. Peter, and as a reward for how good you were to an old stranger, I'm going to give you three wishes. Any old thing, whatever you want, just tell me and it'll be so. Well, John looked at the old man who now had a very faint halo over the top of his head that he just now noticed. And he also noticed that there was a bright light shining through some of the holes and patches that were on his old clothes. Through the seams and things. Anything I want? Old John asked. St. Peter said, anything you want, anything at all, I can make it happen. Well, now, if you remember what I said earlier, you know that John was mighty particular about his tools and his shop in general. So it won't surprise you none that John took a long look around the shop, squinting into the corners and a hymen and a hawing and scratching his head and thinking about and walking around. At last he glanced over at St. Peter and says, only three, right? Well, St. Peter nodded his head and John picked up some things and put them down and so on before he looked St. Peter straight in the eye and said, All right, wish number one. That rocking chair you're sitting in is made to fit me exactly. I don't mind you sitting in it. Not for a second, but it grips me to death when some lazy boot scuffer comes in here and kicks back in my chair when I'm tired and ready to sit a spell. And I want you to make it so that anyone that sits in that chair beside me, besides me has to rock in it until I tell them they can get up. Well, St. Peter's smile faded a little bit and he snapped his fingers and said, Okay, there you go, John. Now you've got two wishes left. Choose them very well. well John smiled a bit with the corner of his mouth and said, You know what? It bugs the heck out of me when the kids come in here and take my good hammer when I'm not looking. They bang on the anvil, they throw it on the ground, and one of the little suckers even actually took it out onto the road and hit rocks with it. I hereby wish that anyone who picks up that hammer besides me has to hit what I tell them to until I tell them they can't, they can quit. Well, St. Peter, he pulled a kind of a sad face and says, well, now, John, that's not nice, but I respect a man's tools. I don't like to, but, and he blinked a few times, there you go, it's done. Now, what else do you want? Gold? A bottomless bag of rivets for your blacksmith shop? Can I do anything? And I can do anything, and you've only got one wish left. Better make it a good one, because I got to tell you. I don't like the way they've been going so far. Well, St. Peter pulled, let's see, getting ahead of myself here. This made John think a little bit harder. And he pulled his mouth in a bit, and but finally he said, Pete, I don't have anything against anyone. I just want what I want, and I don't want anyone to run over me like I wasn't anyone. Do you see that big old rose bush outside the shop door when you came in? Well, St. Peter relaxed a little bit when he heard the topic change. He said, oh yes, it's quite beautiful. I bet you want me to make it bloom all year round, don't you? That'd be real nice. The man upstairs won't mind that at all. Well, John replied, shook his head, said, no, I don't want it to bloom all the time. That would look right unusual. 
I've had it up to here with folks coming by and ripping a branch of flowers off of it when they when they want to look fancy or when they want bucks. Young bucks want a flower to give his girl. I want you to make it so that rose bush will grab anyone who tries to pull a branch off of it, pull them into the middle, and waller them around the stickers till I say go. Well, St. Peter about cried. He begged John to choose something else or to limit the damage to one sticker per person or something along those lines, but John wouldn't budge. St. Peter begged and he pleaded. He reasoned and he even hollered a little bit. He even pointed out that his boss would not at all be amused, but nothing would make John change his mind. So finally, Peter gave in. He got a strange look like he was doing something unpleasant. Closed his eyes, sighed long, and looked at John, and John, I tell you, he says, I thought those folks who said you was mean were wrong after the way you treated me, but now I'm not so sure. But I promise is a promise, and now we both have to live with it. A deal is a deal, and this one's done. Hope you turn out, John. All right. I've got to go now. See you in a few years. Well, the years went by, as years tend to do. And eventually, folks learned to leave old John in his shop alone. Of course, his reputation as a mean so-and-so got worse as the years went by, even though folks forgot exactly why. They just knew not to bother him. Eventually, as with all mortals, John's time on this earth drew nigh. His reputation had spread far and wide so that even the devil had heard of this cranky old smith. The devil decided John would be a good man to have in Hades to keep the place in order, maybe. All the little demons and imps he had were getting out of hand, and old Satan had heard that no child dared darken the door of John Smith's shop. So he called up his younger of his two boys and said, Son, I want you to go upstairs and get old John the blacksmith. I want him down here. His time's up. Well, so the little devil, he went upstairs to get John, and he found John working like he always did at his anvil with his back to the door, paying no attention to whoever walked in. Little devil hollered out, Hey, John Smith! The little devil hollered, Daddy said you'd got to come with me. Your time here is done. So come on now, we've got to go. John looked around to see who had said that. And when he saw who it was, he said, I'll be with you in a minute. I told the man I'd have this job done today, and I'm almost through. Why don't you just pause, have a seat in that old rocking chair over there, and I'll, I'll come when I finish. Well, the little devil hopped right up in the chair, and as soon as he did, that chair started whipping back and forth and back and forth like a leaf in a hurricane. So fast he couldn't even see straight. Hey, help! Get me out of here! The little devil yelled. John just laughed. <laughs> the little devil threatened and cursed him. But John just laughed louder. After about an hour, the yells and cursing had kind of faded out. And after about two hours, a shaky little voice come from the blur of the rocking chair sitting in the corner. Uh, hey, uh, Mr. John, can I please get up from here? John thought for a minute and asked, Do you promise you'll, if I let you go, you'll go away and never come back? little voice from the blur said, Yes, sir. So John stopped the chair and let the little devil go. Well, the devil was pretty mad that his littlest boy couldn't get John when he showed up. But he didn't want to go himself since he was busy roasting some former politicians and having a deal with some uh, congressmen and, and state representatives down there in his business right now. So he called his older son, Junior. Get up there and get John, and don't sit in that chair. So the older devil strode into the John shop in a cloud of sulfur smoke. And I'm not really realizing a blacksmith would hardly be impressed by that. They're kind of used to sulfur and smoke. John looked the bigger devil child up and down. 
And there he, the devil yelled in his fiercest voice he could muster, John Smith, you're to come with me right now. Well, John looked the bigger devil child up and down and said, I done told your brother I had to finish this job before I go, and he wouldn't wait on me. Have yourself a seat in that old rocking chair, and I'll be through in an hour or so. Ah, the devil, the little devil grinned. He says, oh, no, you don't. The bigger devil roared, you ain't got to do me like that, and I ain't going to wait around on you either. You come here right now. Well, John stopped hammering and gave the bigger devil an appraising look, kind of looked him up and down. Say, John says, you look pretty strong. Tell you what, you come over here and swing this hammer for me, and I'll be done in no time. Then I'll go with you. No tricks, the bigger devil asked. Nope, said John. Just need a hand to finish up a little bit faster. Well, the devil nodded, and he the bigger devil grabbed up that hammer away from John without so much as a give me that or a buy your leave and started pounding away on the work John was holding. Of course, he couldn't stop. That was before the time of the small power hammers that they have now. Where you're bomb, 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 automatically hammering on stuff that you might see in a modern blacksmith shop. So John really put the bigger devil through his paces. John the Bigger Devil made 47 sets of horseshoes, 28 fire pokers, 16 coat hooks, 10 sets of tree irons, 5 fallen axes, 3 hoes, repointed 2 plows, one of them, he did it cold just to say that he could. In other words, he didn't heat it up, he had the devil beat it into shape without being heated. And just for fun, he started on a life-sized ram's head out of a four-inch square bar of merchant iron. The bigger devil hollered and screaming the whole time. When the bigger devil finally did quiet down, John stopped pumping the bellows to see what was wrong. And through the ring of the anvil, he heard a low voice say, Mr. Smith, sir, please let me stop. I won't take you down with me. I, I just want to go home. Promise? John asked. Yes, yes, sir. So John let him go. Well, the devil thought he was peeved before when his littlest boy came back. When the older one come in with the arm still a jerking up and down and his horns are ringing softly like they were a tuning fork, the old Satan had to do a major rethink. That must might be doing a rethink. Boys, he shouted. I'm going up there myself, and I aim to put John in the deepest, hottest pit we got. So get it all ready. John was sweeping up the piles of scrap metal around his anvil when the door of the shop blew in. A thunderclap rolled through the building, blowing the scrap metal around over the floor, and Satan himself stalked in like the lord of evil he is. Oh, sir, John Smith, you're coming with me right now. And I ain't going to help you with anything. No chairs, no hammers, no nothing. You done tricked me, boys, and you ain't tricking me. Let's go. Well, John looked at Satan, huffed a bit, and said quietly, You ain't so big. Oh, well, the thunder rolled again, and Satan drew himself up self up and made him himself as big as he could in that room and he said i ain't am i i'll just show you who gonna grab i'm gonna go grab me a switch off of this here big old rosebud tree and tan your hide till there ain't nothing left but strips of jerky with some grease on them well john basically just leaned over and spit on the floor right at the devil's feet you ain't man enough to do it he said you old so-and-so Whoa, tornadoes and hurricanes didn't begin to describe the noise the devil made as he reached it for that big, the biggest, thickest, thorniest branch in the rose bush and tried to break it off. Of course, the bush grabbed hold of him right back and pulled the devil down into the midst of the bush and commenced to just a flogging and poking and sticking old Satan with every sticker of every branch and that it had on it which covered most of it. Now, there was a big bush, too. It covered most of the side of uh, John Smith's uh, 
a blacksmith shop. So it would, the bush would roll the devil down to one side, sticking him in, and sticking him, and then it roll him down the other side, sticking him and poking him. Yeah, that went on for a pretty while. Wow, the commotion was so dreadful that all the people in the whole valley ran away, thinking for sure the end of the world has come. And as for John, he just laughed. Now he watched for a while and went home, had him some supper, went to bed, got up the next morning, went on to work, and there was the devil still in that brush, rolling around, around screaming and hollering to beat the band. Well, this went on. Three days later, John was coming into work, and he didn't hear nothing. When a little voice from the middle of the rose bush asked, John, 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 it's me, your old pal Satan. If I agree to go away, will you not tell anyone about this? About what happened tonight or today he says I won't bother you ever again I swear just please let me go well so John let him go and he kept on living for a number of years until it was till he was basically just too tired to keep on living in fact when he finally died he went up to heaven knocked on the pearly gates and st. Peter opened a little door up there and looked out and said oh John Ah, I don't know what to tell you, John. I hate to tell you, but the big man just about busted me into shining halos for the rest of my eternity for giving you such awful wishes. He told me you ain't allowed in up here after that. So you just follow that path to the side there. You uh, That'll take you on downstairs, I'm sure. Well, John shrugged. Couldn't get into heaven. So he started walking down the road to Hades. Well, when he was getting close to the gates, just where he could read the sign about abandoned hope and such that's over the gates over there. Ah, the littlest devil child poked his head out, saw John, ran back inside and screaming, Daddy, Daddy, that awful old John is here. Satan himself bellowed and came up and barred the gates and said, I'm sorry, John, I can't let you in here. I'm afraid you'll take the place over. Well, nothing else, the devil always tells the truth. He was worried about that. Well, John shrugged again and walked off. And I don't know for sure, but I've heard that he started his own place somewhere where he could go do whatever he wanted to do and nobody ever bothered him. And if you ever happened to run across old evil John, or who they called evil John, I would remind you to do one thing. Do what he tells you to do. Be polite. And oh, for heaven's sakes, don't mess with his tools. Well, that was the story of Evil John and the Devil. You may recognize parts of that story. Uh, it actually goes along with another story from Ireland called uh, Jack and the Devil, where Jack ends up being denied going to heaven and the devil won't take him so he roams the earth and roams and wanders around and he can't quite see it well at night so the devil gives him a couple of embers from from uh, his home hearth and he puts them into a pumpkin puts some some holes in it and makes a jack-o-lantern and then he goes through the darkness with that jack-o-lantern and sometimes you can see Jack and that jack-o'-lantern just kind of floating around and sometimes people say that might be what the brown mountain lights are and some people say that might be those lights in the sky that we see that we can't quite explain but don't know but it's fun to think about all those things so i hope you liked evil john and the devil and uh, we'll come back be sure to come back we'll have another story hopefully real soon and I've got to take care of these two friends here that are arguing back and forth about who's going to stay on top of the porch and on top of the deck but in the meantime guys do me a thing do me a favor remember wash your hands keep some distance between you and other people listen to mom and dad don't be scared we're all just looking out for you and some of the things that you may see may 
make you curious about why grown-ups are acting that way. But there's a reason, and we're just doing all we can to make sure you guys are safe, grandma's safe, granddaddy's safe, mom and dad are safe, brother and sister. We're just trying to take care of everybody, just like we're supposed to do, right? So in the meantime, remember, hands, distance, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.